Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is GGF bringing you episode one of a new Let's Play. This is a game that I haven't played for years. Um, I have a Let's Play of it, I believe, on my channel from... It was one of my earliest Let's Plays that I did for this channel. Uh, it wasn't that popular at the time or anything, but I did do it. Um, I ended up playing the game for like 180 hours. I don't think my Let's Play covers all of that. I think I lost some footage. So not all of that is uploaded, unfortunately. But um, it's been so long that I'd like to try it again. And this time use a few mods. Um, but I don't know. Do you guys want to see this? Do you want to watch me play this game? Um, it's been long enough that I've pretty much forgotten everything. Uh, and the mods we're using are really cool. They add all sorts of good stuff. It's just a couple of them. And, uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want to see this. So if you want to see more, then go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. But, um, if not, if you w would rather I do more obscure games or cover other things, then let me know that too. But for right now, this is going to be episode one of Let's Play Kenshi Modded. Oh yeah. This game is amazing. I mean, when I first discovered this, my mind was blown. It's a very fascinating game. So here's the mods we're using. You guys can look these up. This is it, just these four. We're using A Forgotten World, which adds, you know, you can see some of the new added stuff there. Over 100 new research, 150 new building furniture, 35 new items. It adds things like titans to the world that are endgame bosses that you can go against that are very difficult to take down. And then distant towns. This is just a feature which renders the towns at a great distance. So you can see them in the distance, which is very cool. And then the other big mod is Reactive World. You guys may know about this one as well. Um, it adds a lot of effects to the world, different world triggers and, you know, clans or factions taking over different towns and stuff like that. And that's it. And then this is the patch for Distant Towns for Reactive World. So that is it. I'd like to keep it light like this and just play with these few. That way we don't have potentially any... Um, crossover kind of bugs or anything like that, any co uh, conflicts. So, fingers crossed, it'll work good with this. It's not 100% known if a Forgotten World works with Reactive World, but it's not that crazy to think that we could have, you know, a glitchless game here, and these two wouldn't conflict. I talked to both the mod authors on Steam, and they seem to both think that the mod will work uh, together. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what awaits us with this awesome game, Kenshi. So pretty much now everyone in the world knows about this game. It sold over 2 million copies. And let's go fast. Zone hopping allows you to jump between characters in different map zones without any loading time because it keeps a larger area in the memory. May use more RAM and reduce frame rate. Uh, maybe we'll hold off on that because I do have all the uh, graphical stuff turned up here. As you can see, the tip most distant views and stuff like that. Everything is jacked up. Got the audio controls. There's the mods that we're using. So yeah, um, again, let me know if you guys want to see this. Let's go ahead and hit new game and see what we're up against. So there's some new starts here with these mods. You can start as a group of six cannibals trying to find some fresh meat. Supreme Rock Bottom. You're hated by most of the world. For experienced players. Uh, Supreme Warrior. Now these are different wanderers. There's Wanderer in Shark, which is the mod of the um, the swamp area, and then there's a Wanderer in Mongrel, where <laughs> fun stuff awaits. Smuggler. We're going to skip through these and go ahead and be the um, I think the Empire citizen. 
And my audio is not not working. I apologize, guys. Be right back. Let's try that again. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be the Empire Citizen because it just um is a very basic start, which is what we want. And oh, while I'm here, let me reset the tutorials. We have to go through the tutorials. I was playing a little bit off camera just to get re-familiarized, but honestly, I'm not re-familiarized. That's going to happen in the game. So let's go ahead and hit Empire Citizen. So let's check this out. Difficulty is default. Start with 750 cash, credits, whatever. Play style of RPG. A simple citizen of the United States, you lost your job and your house at the whim of a noble lord. Faced with poverty and starvation, which is a crime in this place, you decide to head out of town and find some form of self-employment before you starve to death. Let's see, everything here is set at one. Bandits loot makes life unfair. Easy prospecting. I'm not sure what that's about. But we're going to leave this all as is and hit begin. And let's go, son. If a slaver shaves your hair off, you can get it restored by visiting a plastic surgeon. These guys can usually be found hanging around in bars. Huh. <clears throat> Alright, hold middle mouse button to rotate the cam camera. Use the mouse wheel to zoom. Uh, now create your first character. Use the confirm button when finished. We're going to be a male and let's see, you know, they have hive, worker drone, soldier drone, hive prince, there's skeleton, this is added by the mods I think, screamer mk1, p4 unit, regular skeleton, um, there's Shek, male and female, and human, you could be actually a cannibal scav. A Scorched Lander, a regular Cannibal, or a Green Lander. So we're going to be a Scorched Lander. Gender male. Um, so let's check out the race description. Scorched Landers tend to value personal freedoms above all else. They don't tend to get along well with rules, regulations, and religions. And as a result, have a reputation as social misfits and are often found in more adventurous professions. Despite this, however, they are highly creative, making them natural-born traders and skilled weaponsmiths, honest to a fault, laughing in the face of manners, moderation, and anything sensible. They make loyal friends, passionate enemies, and are great fun to drink with. <laughs> so their hit points are 100. They get dexterity 10% bonus, athletics, stealth, armor smithing, weapon smithing, and dodging, all 20% bonuses. And they get minus 20% to farming, cooking, laboring, and minus 10% to strength. And here we can, you know, build up our guy. So let's see, let's go ahead and make him. I want to be a tall dude. Frame, pretty big frame, posture's fine, posture's a little too good. Well, I guess right there is good. Shoulder set. Right in the middle. Neck position. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Leg length. Shoulders. Arm bolt. Let's get a little bulkier arms. Hands. Let's get a little bigger hands. Chest, a little bit bigger chest, stomach. Yeah, we're a pretty big dude. Waist, 
Whoa. Let's turn down that stomach a bit. Arm bulk two and shoulders. Not shoulders, chest. There we go. Um, hips. It's a little bit more in the hips area. Leg bulk. Leg shape. Middle, normal legs and feet. Gotta have bigger feet. Okay, there we go. Now let's work on the face. Face. Doesn't seem we can change the face for much. Head size, head shape, neck. Neck width. Oh, big dog. Neck length, jaw, cheekbones. So this is fine, pretty much. Let's um get this hair out of here. It says bald for some reason. Something like that, but let's get the beard gone. Um, the hair. Let's get some saturation. Get like brown right there. Right there. Looks a little orange to me. Maybe don't saturate it as much. Maybe don't brighten it as much. There we go. Like that. I don't know how to change his eyes or anything. Um, nose length, nose arch, let's see, eyes depth, Chin depth. Go a little like that. Um, brow tilt. Oh, that looks terrible. Kind of a scary looking dude. Brow position. Mouth width. Mouth size. Head size needs to be a little bigger. Um, but I guess that's about it. Eyes depth, eyes narrow.
let's see. Face, and then hair. Pretty much have that figured out. No beard. Brightness. Brown. We're gonna go white hair. I like silver hair. See what looks cool. Maybe something like that. And any of the different haircuts we want to get. Auto saving. Looks pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. A lot of good haircuts. Reds. Man, I don't know which one to choose. Whoa. Huh. Hey. Okay, that's 40 out of 40. Time to head back. Something like that. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's zoom out here. Pretty big guy. His name, Soto. We'll name him, of course, Elzar. Let's see, is this how we want to go? Our height is 104. Alright, let's go, son. Bomb, bomb. There we go. Alright, we're in the Great Desert. <clears throat> oh, I am getting some choppiness already. There we go. Let's uh, look at the basic controls. You can view the camera with the WASD keys. Move the camera with the WASD keys to rotate your view. Hold the middle mouse button to zoom. Use the mouse scroll. Do both to continue. Um, WASD keys. Rotate your view using the middle mouse button. The middle bottom panel shows the characters in your active squad. To select a member, left click the character icon on the panel. To give a move order to your character, right click on the terrain. Double click on your character icon to center the screen and follow their movement. Very good. Right click on a character. Characters are interchangeable objects to interact. Hold the right mouse button to get more available actions. Uh, okay, let's talk to Burn. Greetings. 
they are the United Cities. Just some workers. Okay, finish that. The UI overview. Select a character from your squad. This shows your selection's current state, statistics, and other basic info. Mount, mouse over each item for more information. So we've got the state, current goal of the character, the goal, encumbrance, 0% weightless. It shows some XP there, the run speed penalty, the stealth penalty. Which athletics XP, encumbrance penalty zero, full speed bonus plus 50%. This is the rate at which your athletic skill is increasing while running. 0% strength XP. This is the rate at which your strength is increasing. So you can carry stuff and like work out to get higher strength. Toughness XP. This is the rate at which your toughness increases when you get hurt. 3x. Minus 10 KO points. When an injury to a body part goes below your KO point of minus 10, then you're down for good. Your body will enter a coma and won't regain consciousness until all critical body parts have healed above zero. Run speed. Athletic skill 1, max possible speed, 17 miles per hour. Armor and equipment, we get an extra 10% to 19 miles per hour. Total is 20 plus 2 miles per hour. And then hunger rate, 72%. Racial hunger rate, 0 0.9. Encumbrance effect, 1.0. Idle, 0 0.8. Then we've got attack. It has equipment bonuses, minus 1, weapon indoors penalty, weather penalty, minus 10, and base hit chance, minus 9%. There's defense, which has your defense skills, your chance of blocking enemy attacks. Weapon indoors penalty, total equipment bonuses, minus 1. Strength, XP rate, 0%, max carry weight, 21%. Zero blunt weapon damage, one strength skill, one total. Dexterity is important for attack speed, 0.73x. Block speed, 0.45x. Weapon cutting damage, zero. Dexterity skill, one, total one. Toughness, XP rate, 3x. Health KO point, minus 10. Wound degeneration speed, 1.68x. Damage resist, minus 39%. And dodge. Zeros across the board. Leg injury would cause a penalty. Equipment penalty. Encumbrance penalty. Yeah. Okay. So we've been over that one. Let's continue. This shows the selected character's current health condition. Mouse over each item for more information. Normal. You are kind of healthy for now. Racial bleed rate multiplier 0.9. Your head is okay. Your stomach's okay. Your chest. Your left arm, your right arm, your left leg, your right leg, and hunger. You are well fed and currently have no problem. Okay. The arrow buttons allow you to pause and fast forward the game speed. Very good. Here you'll find your character's current funds and the in-game time and date. 7.50. Day 1, 10 a.m. This opens the build menu. Opens the build menu. Here you can place buildings and start your own outpost anywhere in the world, but you should choose a safe area and check availability of resources using the prospect button. You'll also need building materials to finish construction. Here you can open your inventory, skill statistics, world map, tech, and squad management menus. For more tips and tutorials, make sure to check out the help menu at the very bottom. So we've got the inventory. This shows what we're carrying. We've got half pants, ragged, cloth, no kind of resistance offered. They weigh one kilogram, value 53, sell value 13, and they cover the left and right legs 40%. Armor is a rag shirt. Oh, it offers cut resistance efficiency, 80%. But really, it doesn't offer much anything. A bit coverage, 25% head, 80% right arm, 20% chest, 10% stomach. We've got 
wooden sandals, shoddy grade, they're made out of cloth, 10% right and left leg, skills athletics effect is 1.1, which I guess is better, combat speed effect 1.05, classical wooden sandals, they take a bit of getting used to, but they're actually really good for running in sand, uh, and these are dirty rags worn by slaves and good for nothings. Our weapon is an iron club, blunt weapon class, cutting damage 0 0.04, blunt damage 0 0.09, blood loss 0 0.30, attack bonus minus 1, defense bonus minus 1, indoors bonus plus 2, damage versus animals minus 10%, weight 2 kilograms, a basic iron stick with a wrapped handle, manufactured by unknown, your weapon is probably... A few hundred years old, any identifiable, mar identifiable markings have long since rusted away. And that's our whole inventory. We have nothing else. Okay, then let's look at our statistics menu. Or statuses, or whatever. Here's our attributes. Um, we could spend an episode probably just looking at these. Uh, and we will, I think, because I want to go over the base game first kind of retrain myself as well and um, check all this stuff out before getting into things so let's um, let's pot well I guess this is good to look at strength attribute um, it affects the max carry weight 21 kilograms strength XP rate while walking attack speed with heavy weapons chance to break free or resist kidnapping attempts Martial Arts Damage, 2. Strength XP Rate in Combat, 100%. Ways to Train It. Carrying People or Overloading Inventory Using a Heavier Weapon. It also affects your physical bulk. Your physical strength determines your ability to use heavy weapons and armor without tiring and to carry heavy loads, including your wounded comrades. Strength affects the blunt damage you do with heavy weapons, hacking-type blades, and while unarmed, it is trained faster by using heavier weapons in battle or by traveling around with a very heavy inventory or encumbrance. Toughness. Stats affected damage resistance, minus 39%. Martial arts damage, 2. Chance to resist stealth knockouts. Toughness current XP rate, 3. Knockout time, 2.48x. Um, the knockout point again is minus 10. Wound deterioration speed is 1.68. Amount of damage it takes to stagger you, zero. Ways to train it, getting hurt, getting beaten up, losing battles, not wearing armor, taking more damage, get up and fight instead of playing dead. So those are ways to raise your toughness. Toughness is both physical and mental. It's how you survive out in the desert. Physically, it's your ability to take a beating and survive. You will also take less damage and will be less likely to stumble when hit by a weaker attack. Mentally, it's an attitude forged from harsh experience. Do you pass out from your wounds like a sissy, or do you force yourself to struggle to your feet again? Do you panic and bleed out, or can you stay calm enough to lower your heart rate and let the blood clot? Bonuses if you are fighting while critically wounded. Once your health drops below your KO point, your health becomes critical and you won't be able to get back up again. You go into a coma and need healing. Dexterity. Um say successful racial xp bonus times 1.1 stats affected are your attack speed your block speed your weapon cutting damage your rate of fire and reload speed ways to train attacking with light weapons affects visible muscle definition dexterity affects the speed and quality of your sword work your sword cuts will do more damage your attacks and blocks will be faster it also helps with handling and reloading ranged weapons. And finally, perception. Stats affected accuracy, range, shooting moving targets, way to train using turrets and ranged weapons. Your perception affects your general accuracy with all ranged weapons, including your ability to hit far away or moving targets. And then we have the weapon skills, katanas. Amount of damage dealt are the stats affected, ways to train attacking with this specific weapon. Affects damage. Katanas are a common weapon and their quality varies greatly. Most are scavenged goods with a history of owners and barely good for scrap. Masterworks are around, however, and their speed and cutting power is unrivaled by any other blade. Sabers. 
affects damage. A saber is a heavy blade designed for heavy slashing damage. The heavier blade makes them slower and more cumbersome, but stronger for blocking with and cutting through armor. Then there's hackers. Affects damage. The Holy Nation prefer them for their advantage when fighting against mechanical enemies. Often considered a thug's weapon in most other cultures, hackers are heavy axe-bladed weapons that do as much blunt damage as chopping damage, relying mainly on brute strength rather than skill. The crude blades don't cause as much blood loss, so victims tend to get maimed to death instead. Heavy weapons uh, affects damage. Most normal people struggle to even lift a full-weight heavy blade, and they require incredible strength and endurance to wield effectively. Beginners struggle with this weapon style and face a hard path ahead. As a result, living practitioners are few, and many men carry them only for bluff and posturing. The real masters of this weapon, however, are men to be feared. Blunt affects damage. Blunt weapon damage breaks bones, disables limbs, and temporarily stuns organs. They don't cause much in the way of blood loss, so are not usually lethal. Armor is usually designed for protection from blades, so you can often beat through it. A good weapon for the pacifists or those who like to be different. And then pole arms are actually in the game. The skill affects damage. An unconventional no weapon. Pole arms have incredible reach and give an advantage when fighting against animals. Our skill is one in all of those. Then we have combat skills. Melee attack. Um, frequency. Stats affected. Frequency of attacks on opponent. Chance of attacks not getting blocked. Ways to train, fighting with swords, using special training equipment, bonus when fighting opponents stronger than you, penalty when fighting opponents weaker than you. This is your general skill in melee combat. It governs your chance to successfully land a hit on your opponent and is essential for whatever weapon you choose to master. Melee defense. Stats affected are chance of blocking incoming attacks. Ways to train, getting hurt, getting beaten up, losing battles, blocking incoming attacks. Bonus when fighting opponents stronger than you, and penalty for ones weaker. This is your ability to perceive and defend against attacks from opponents. By increasing this skill, you will successfully block more attacks when using a sword. A balanced swordsman would keep this skill similar to his melee attack level. Dodge. We get a racial, racial XP bonus of 1.2. Stats affected. Chance of evading attacks while unarmed. Chance of evading attacks while stumbling. Dodge XP rate 100%, training hindered by encumbrance, ways to train, fighting unarmed, and getting hit while stumbling. The ability to evade attacks without blocking, you need to stay light and fast. If you're encumbered with heavy equipment, you won't be able to dodge or learn anything. Martial arts, affects damage too, unlocks better techniques, frequency of unarmed attacks on opponent, chance of attacks not getting blocked, and reduces injury when striking metal. Huh. Ways to train them. Fighting unarmed, fighting encumbered for strength. Using special training equipment. Bonus when fighting opponents stronger. Penalty for weaker. Affects visible muscle definition. Your martial arts skill. A rare skill in this day and age. Warriors only consider it a last resort. As at normal skill levels, an unarmed man is always at a huge disadvantage against an armed opponent or similar ability. Of similar ability. There are stories, however, of high level martial arts masters who can match any master swordsman in combat with just their bare hands. Physical conditioning is an important factor for martial a martial artist. Then we have ranged weapons, turrets, um, the accuracy, the rate of fire, and the reload speed, ways to train using harpoon and crossbow turrets, Skill at shooting with defensive weapon turrets affects accuracy, reload speed, and target acquisition. Then there's crossbows in the game. Uh, ways to train, use crossbow and ranged weapons. Skill at shooting with them affects accuracy, reload speed, and target acquisition. Precision shooting. This is friendly fire avoidance. Has a percentage. And ways to train is accidentally shooting your friends. When using ranged weapons, this is your ability to avoid accidentally shooting your allies. Nothing worse than accidentally getting shot in the back by your own friends. It's adversely affected when you have injuries, however. Okay, those are the combat skills. Then we go to thievery. There's stealth. 
Racial XP bonus times 1.2. Stats affected. Ability to remain undetected while sneaking. Avoiding discovery when in disguise. Avoiding discovery when you have a bounty. Aided by staying in the darkness and special gear. Hindered by encumbrance heavy armor. Wounded legs or torso. And ways to train using stealth mode with enemies around. The ability to move around undetected enables you to sneak around, steal things, and pick locks without anybody noticing. Also invaluable for escaping hostile imprisonment. Breaking out of a cage is all well and good, but you won't get much further without stealth. Much more effective in the darkness. Injuries will hinder your effectiveness, stealthiness, although your toughness level can counteract this. Okay, pretty good info. Lock picking. Um, lock picking doors and cages, ways to train, picking locks and cages and special training equipment, the ability to pick locks, open doors and safes. More importantly, however, it's also used to break out of situations, cages, jails, handcuffs. It's for those who value freedom and don't want, don't wait around to be rescued. And then thievery. This is stealing items and selling stolen items, ways to train, stealing things. The ability to steal things from containers, safes, storage boxes, and people. Assassination. Stealthy knockout. 0.5x. Chance to successfully kidnap someone. Chance to break free while being carried away. Resist knockout in kidnapping attempts. And ways to train trying stealthy knockouts. If you are in stealth mode, you can sneak up behind people and knock them out. This skill determines how long they are unconscious for. Then there's two athletic skills. Athletics, we have a 1.2 bonus to XP. This affects your max run speed, which my, ours is 80. Current run speed, 87. Athletics XP bonus, 150%. Ways to train running fast with a light inventory. This slightly affects muscle definition. This is your ability to run faster. Very useful for thieves, scouts, and assassins. It's improved by doing lots of running at full speed without encumbrance from a heavy inventory. And finally, swimming. Max swim speed is 6 and current swim speed 6. Ways to train swimming around in water. This is your ability to swim faster and further without drowning. Slightly affects muscle definition. Then we've got sciences. Field medic. First aid skills, 3.4x. Seems pretty good. Ways to train is healing people, crafting med kits. This skill saves lives and allows you to stop bleeding wounds and jury rig critical injuries, allowing characters to continue fighting when they shouldn't. In the long term, however, major injuries would require bed rest. A beginner will not only heal wounds more slowly, but will use up all their med kits really quickly. Engineer, building things, 0.51x, repairing things, 0.51x, ways to train building and repairing things the skill at building and repairing structures robotics the equivalent of a medical skill for anything for anyone robotic used for repairs and science research rate 0.51x ways to train researching things at a research bench doing science being sciency negatively affects visible muscle definition affects skill at prospecting and researching new technologies Hmm. Finally, we've got the trades. Weaponsmith. We get 0.1, uh, 1.2x bonus. Crafting weapon speed, 0.51x. Weapon quality, rusted junk. Ways to train crafting weapons. The ability to craft higher quality weapons in a shorter space of time. Affects physical bulk. Armorsmith. Affects physical bulk. The ability to craft higher quality gear and armor. In a shorter space of time, our armor quality is prototype. Also get a 1.2 bonus. Crafting armor and parts. Crossbow smith. Ability to craft higher quality crossbows and bolts in a shorter space of time. Crafting crossbow speed. Crafting crossbow bolt speed. Crossbow quality prototype. And then laboring. Mining. Using machinery. Ways to train. Work hard. We have a 0 0.8 penalty to this. Well, it's penalized by 0.2. Skill at general manual labor work, such as mining and using simple machinery. Farming, we have a penalty on this. There's harvesting speed and harvesting yield. Work hard to train it. 
knowledge of farming crops is not only affects speed that you can gather your crops, it also affects the yield when harvesting. In other words, unskilled farmers will mess up some of your crops. And finally, cooking. Uh, work hard to train. We have a penalty on this too. Skill at cooking food and brewing drinks negatively affects visible, visible muscle definition. So those are our stats and skills, our attributes and skills. I want to get out of there. Is F5 save? Yep. We are... Oh, there's... We have it full screen. My bad, guys. That's how it should be. We are 40 minutes in, so we're going to wrap it here, guys. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed that. Let's finish with this tutorial real quick. This shows assigned player jobs and orders for the selected character. We'll go over this next time, I'm sure. Um... And we'll save here. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, we didn't get into the actual gameplay yet much, but we will in future episodes. If you guys want to see it, let me know by liking, commenting, and subscribing if you'd like to see more. And uh, I do hope you'll tune in next time. There will be an episode two at least, and who knows how many past that. So we're going to go ahead and save game as YouTube 1. And yeah, I hope to see you guys then. We could have a lot of fun with this game, guys. It's very cool and something to get absolutely lost in. So uh, let me know. Until then, be well, live well, stay well. And much love, peace, and joy, guys. Take care. Ciao for now.